So good morning, uh, sorry, good evening, everybody. So can we have a small introduction? Uh, you know, we have another uh, five, six minutes more to go. So can we have a small introduction of all the participants uh, and let us know each other while we wait for the time? Uh, Dr. Santosh Kumar there? Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. So, me, myself, Dr. Santosh Kumar from University of Technology and Applied Sciences, Shinas, Oman, Sultanate of Oman. Oh. oh, oh. Thank I'm you, working... sir. Thank you for coming, yes, all the joining from Oman. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you, sir. What's the time there now, sir? Here it's 5.40, sir. 5.40 p.m. 5.40 p.m. Okay, okay. Nice, sir. Thanks for taking off this time. It's a pleasure, sir. It's a pleasure. Okay. Yes, Mr. Ratan Rai. You're there, sir? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chetan Hirema? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just a small intro about you, sir. So we can't hear you. Maybe you're mute. Hello, Mr. Chetan. Okay, Mr. Sudhir Pandey. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Just a small intro about you, sir. Uh, sir, I'm a student of Diva Patil University, Pune, Ambi. Pune, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, I didn't get the university's name. Uh, sir, D.Y. Patil University. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, Madam Saili is the Vice Chancellor, I think. Yeah, sir. Okay, okay. So nice of you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mrs. Roshni Turalkar. Yes, sir. This is a small introduction about you, madam. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much, sir. Small introduction about you, madam. First. I am a student of D.Y. Patil doing MBA in first uh, recently in first year. Oh, very nice. Thank you for joining, madam. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rajdeep. Yes, sir. So good evening, sir. Nice that you have joined, sir. Thank you for joining. Just a small introduction yes, about sir. you, sir. Uh, myself, Rajdeep Mandukar from uh, D.Y. Patil University, Ambi. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining. Thank you, sir.
people can just casually start introducing yourself and all that. Professor Rajesh. Okay, sir, prof nice, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Professor Rajesh. Thanks for joining, sir. Oh, Professor Rajesh also is from Sultan of Oman. Thank you, sir. This online is a very good uh, platform. We get to know people from all over the world. Yeah, so it is 7.15 and we start the program. So once again, good evening, friends. Can I have a good uh, good evening from all of you and uh, people who are comfortable with camera on can just switch on the camera for some time till we start this. Session. Anyway, good evening. Can I have a good evening from all of you? Good evening, good evening. sir. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. Yeah. So it is uh, nice. So let's have a you know a clap and then you know welcome everybody and welcome yourself too. Generally, you know, even though the webinar is on robotics, uh, you know we cannot behave like robots now. We have to behave like more enthusiastically. Um, And uh, so it's very nice. So my name is uh, T.K. Raji, founder of this uh, company called Suprajeev Technical and Management Studies, OPC Private Limited. Uh, basically, we became a private limited company about four, five years back. Earlier, we were known in other name uh, called Supergy Foundation, and before that, we were called Trainers Estate and Computer Systems Private Limited. We've been in training for the last 30 years. We've been making special purpose machines uh, for the automobile industry and all that. And somewhere training was a call. And that's how we got into training. And we got into soft skill training and management development programs for companies. And we train people all over India in Maruti, Suzuki, Hyundai, Ford. Uh, you name the company in the manufacturing sector. We also got into a lot of banks, uh, the engineering colleges all over India, the ITIs all over India, the diploma colleges all over India. And uh, somewhere along the line, as we were growing, as we were training, we felt a need where, you know, skill becomes... Uh, a very good, um, inspiring tool. And, you know, skill gives you a lot of confidence. Skill gives you a lot of power. And that's how we really got into more of skill training. And as I got into skill training, I felt that the backing of an industry will be very useful. So that is how we associated with a company called as Advanced Mechanical Ser Services Private Limited here at Bangalore. It's called as AMS India. Advanced Mechanical Services where we make BIW products. We make add they make additive manufacturing machines. They manufacture robots and also BIW products. Then we make drones. So I, I needed a so that is a good backing we got and uh, added to the Added to the adding a feather on the cap, they were also the best MSME award winner. And so that's why we have got a backing of a company called Advanced Mechanical Services Private Limited. And uh, we are thereby, we also felt that engineering is becoming more simpler and user friendly today. And more and more people can start becoming. Technologists. Technologists are people who do new things every day. Technocrat, you know. So more and more people, boys and girls, men and women of all ages, irrespective of your non-technical background, also can get into this. 
So with that in mind, we are doing this series of webinars. We also have made an electric vehicle. We are now getting into the autonomous sector. Uh, we have also, so that's how we already made a three-wheeler electric vehicle. We have kept it in a college called St. Thomas College of Engineering, where we are tying up for our EV courses. Uh, so we will talk later. We have got the WhatsApp group. We'll introduce ourselves. Anyway, we let's get on to the webinar. So that is how we wanted to get into more of, you know, uh, technology, consumption of technology by all ages of people, men and women, boys and girls. We have no difference. All are the same. Our age group. We want more non-technical people also to understand technology because technology is becoming simpler. So with this, uh, I, uh, robotics, you know, are now fast catching up. And it's supposed to be the trend setter in 2024. And with this, uh, we have with us a faculty by Mr. Vikash Kumar, an MTech from IIT, uh, 15 years of experience in the field. Okay. And a, a good trainer with versatile experience here, his... Uh, the details of Mr. Vikash. So we can uh, really develop robots for you. We can also, you know, handle a lot of training sessions for you. So Mr. Vikash comes with a lot of training experience, also with a lot of consultancy experience for the last 15 years. So, you know, and we can do this industrial robots, robotic welding and flexible manufacturing systems, industrial automation, all these areas will be our areas of expertise. So not taking much of your time between Vikas and you, uh, I hand over the session to Mr. Vikas. So thank you very much. The last 15 minutes will be there for question answer session and we'll reserve the question and answers in the last 15 minutes. So thank you very much and over to Mr. Vikas. Thank you thank participants, you. thank you for joining. Over to Thank you, Raju, sir, for introducing me. Yeah. So let's start this beautiful evening uh, with the objective. We must have to learn little about industrial robots. Okay. So uh, we are going to start this session. And uh, during this session, suppose I'm going to ask some question. You can unmute yourself and a uh, little bit supports required in between my presentation so that uh, I... I ensure you are listening to me. Okay. So uh, during this uh, webinar, I will try to touch upon uh, importance of this technology. Uh, if I have to divide into percentage maximum, I am going to emphasize on this importance because uh, as title itself says, uh, what are the essential skill set we have to develop in ourselves so that we can uh, readily fit for any industry. So if we properly understand the importance of skills and uh, ongoing technology, then only we can do justice with this. So my main focus uh, during webinar will be on this only. Uh, after that, I will try to touch upon robot systems and classification, little upon classification. Then uh, a very brief about programming methods so that you will be aware how robots can be programmed. Then we will try to learn what are the latest trends are going on in robotics domain, plus their applications, then some job opportunities. We will try to touch upon all these topics. So normally I start any session with some questions, series of questions. So first questions, uh, normally I ask with my audience, uh, what do you think robotics is still a choice or need? So most of them are agree like uh, it may be need for today but some may be in doubt maybe robotics is still a choice so i come back to this slide uh, again during uh, at the end of my presentation then you can uh, like easily uh, answer this question where it is uh, exactly a choice or need okay so before i start uh, like we have to talk about a skill set also. So robotics is one skill set that you can develop if uh, some interest triggered in this domain. But just try to understand the importance of this. Are you updated product for industry? If you are doing engineering or any like technical courses, 
many industry going to like uh, take you as a product if you are having good skill set then you are very right product for any industry so are you updated just think of this if you uh, look at your mobile that is a smart mobile uh, one simple question you have to answer only yourself this mobile is a living thing or non living thing you can easily answer this by saying it is non living thing but have you noticed this uh, mobile every month every 15 days uh, like need some updates we have to keep updates our mobile as some new versions of softwares comes so see if this non living thing requires daily or weekly or monthly updates why not us we are living thing we as a human being we have to update ourselves on daily basis hourly basis on minutes basis i can say because if you see today scenario uh, technology is very disruptive so try to try to update yourself as much as you can do and try to skill or reskill yourself as much as you can do so that you will be a right product for any industry so uh, we are going to talk lot about a skill set but if you have to choose what matters most for you your skill set or your mindset suppose i have to start my journey my career so what is my main focus my skill set or my mindset so here i'm directly going to answer this question if you have right mindset for me it matters most and i i i'm 100% sure most of them agree if you have positive mindset good mindset then only you can acquire good skill set without good mindset without right mindset we cannot acquire skill sets suppose you have good mindset and you have chosen any domain robotics iot embedded system anything as a skill set so apart from these two sets one more set is very very essential that is environment set environment set means where you are going to learn this all technologies suppose i am having positive mindset like i have to learn robotics now skill set i have decided mindset i have prepared but where from where so we have to choose good organization good platform where we can acquire this good skill sets so that we can we can uh, like easily fit into industrial environment and from very first day we can be a productive for any industry again can can you see this slide in that there are two pots with different different environment and one fish is trying to jump from one one pot to another pot what does exactly means you can relate your whole life with this slide i think if you you have to like uh, uh, give your opinion what exactly message hidden under this slide most of them may judge correctly if fish has to be there in this muddy environment in this environment can this fish is going to survive straight away answer is no this fish is not going to survive at least in this environment so for their survival it has to jump from this pot number 1 to this pot number 2 because in this environment fish can easily survive apply same theory on your career if you are not updated product if you are not having right skill set can you survive in in any industry suppose industry requires a programming expert in python language and you are expertise in this uh, suppose pascal a very outdated language so you are having expertise but you are expertise on outdated technology so try to try to update yourself on daily basis so that you can having right skill set as per industry demand and same theory is already given by professor charles darwin only the fittest will survive each and every line having a very in depth meaning see here if you go through this not the strongest and not the intelligent who is going to responsive for this change only going to survive if you are responsive then only you can survive 
so this is the mantra for success if you are trying to update yourself if you are trying to change yourself with respect to industry then only you can survive and in this universe only one thing is constant and that is change if you are ready to change with this change then only you can survive please please read this line it is having very very in depth meaning like change is only constant in this universe so be ready and be ready with this change and try to change yourself otherwise you will become a nokia or any n numbers of company those who are not flexible enough to change their survival was very very difficult so try to mix yourself with this change and i'm having one video just see this once upon a time business as usual was often good enough no more where we are going good enough is dead in a world where everything is connected where everything is equally excellent when performance is reaching perfection there's only one space left to innovate in you right now you are a central point in the raging tornado of change fueled by digitization mobilization augmentation disintermediation automation well the list goes on science fiction is becoming science fact think about self driving cars or computers that can learn and think The way we work will never be the same. The skills we need will be dramatically different. Winning or losing are now happening faster than ever before. So what's your response? How will you discover new opportunities in one of the most transformational times in human history? Are you driving change or are you being driven by it? Disruption has become the new normal. with change it's always gradually then suddenly well things really have stopped happening gradually this change is exponential everything that used to be dumb and disconnected is now wired and intelligent cars cities ports farms even our bodies will be wired with sensors and will talk to each other these game changers are also combinatorial they amplify each other creating a perfect storm of change Quantum computing fuels big data. The Internet of Things fuels artificial intelligence and deep learning, which fuels robotics. However, anything that cannot be digitized or automated will become extremely valuable. Human-only traits such as creativity, imagination, intuition, emotion, and ethics will be even more important in the future because machines are very good at simulating. but not a being. Yes, robots and software will do some of our work, but this will allow us to focus on things that cannot be automated. To imagine change squared, you've got to start engaging more with what might be, not just with what is. Immerse yourself in the immediate future, five to seven years out from today. We need to go beyond technology and data to reach human insights. and wisdom technology represents the how of change but humans represent the why the future is about holistic business model the opportunity is to be liquid to learn just in time not just in case not single improvements but complete transformations not individual systems but new ecosystems humanity is where true and lasting value is created We will engage with and buy things because of the experiences they provide, because of their transformative power. The future doesn't just happen, the future gets happened. The new way to work is to embrace technology, but not to become it. The future is in technology, yet the bigger future lies in transcending it. Let's live and lead from here. hope you have enjoyed this video a lot a very meaningful message hidden under this video that i have shown just now so uh, 
let's uh, see this slide if you look back uh, nowadays everything is getting smarter just pick any product in your life you will see the lot of changes happen in that particular product and why this change happened if you have to search because everything is getting smarter faster and better if you pick any product like you want all these four things like high speed it should be delivered with high speed then it should have best quality some innovation you always demand with some 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 product whatever you are going to buy and with high performance so these are the by default factors that we are expecting from every product so here any company can be dealing into two kinds of product either it is product based or it is service based so if you check upon any service like travel service payment service health service entertainment industry any industry any service you will find everything was earlier also but now it is added with this smart word so everything is getting smart now school is getting smart entertainment is getting smart payment travel home each and everything is getting smart so if everything is getting smart so why not our industry if you see this black and white picture that is lying on your left hand side in that you can see lot of people working on soft floor but here if you go with right hand side picture you will see lot many robots are working people are not there or very less people are there because people are working behind this technology not on the soft floor so people are needed here also but with different skill set if that skill set you are going to acquire definitely good future waiting for you and uh, each and every station if you consider like automotive each and every station from starting from handling the sheet metal then from assembly of certain parts then painting then then here you can see some assembly again some tire assembly some glass assembly seat assembly each and every station is equipped with this robotic arm where i'm just circling if you see each and every station is equipped with this robots or automation you can say so this changing nature of work we have to understand then only we can uh, fit ourselves in this kind of industrial environment so if you are sensing this change suppose i'm i'm ready to understand i'm understanding this changes that industry is uh, happening that under industry any happening so if you see every industrial revolution happened with some 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 time slots industrial revolution 1 then industrial revolution 2 then industrial revolution 3 then if you talk about today industry 4.0 revolution 4 is going on so if you have sensed this demand means we have to change ourselves so that we can easily fit with this industrial environment and we have to understand this why why this industrial revolution happened why we have to switch from 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 and soon 4 to 5 will come why this change happened why this revolution happened if you can answer this correctly means you are at very right path this change happened because of you and me you and me are going to like acting as a customer for any industry we are so demanding we are so demanding we want good products innovative products very high speed with high productivity with high performance each and every parameters we are expecting from industry so if we are demanding high like then industry had to produce very efficient product so if we are so demanding because of this changing nature of work what is changing nature of works just try to understand why industry has changed a lot in last 4 5 or like 10 years earlier we were working on this high volume and low mix this was the our motive these two things means everything we want to produce in masses high quantity quantity should be very high here but if you talk about variant variant of any product so variant is either a or b product they are producing suppose a product we are producing in 500 units and b also in 500 units per day so total our uh, productivity is 1000 but nowadays people are or industries are working on this phenomena that is not high volume that is high mix and low volume 
means we have to deal with various variety variety a variety b variant c variant d like that n numbers of variants we are trying to introduce with each and every product and if you talk about individual number that may be low because based on demand we have to check what kind of volume we needed for a what kind of volume we have to produce for b c like that overall if you check suppose now with this concept suppose my industry is dealing with a b c and d product not two more variant i have introduced so if you check the volume of each and every uh, variant maybe here i am producing 300 units here only 100 here maybe i am using uh, producing 150 and here suppose uh, i'm using 450 units so if you go and add over all these things so it may be around 1000 only so overall productivity we are not going to hamper only we have to deal with various various variety various mix various variant like that but the main challenge with this phenomena this concept suppose industry having this much space just try to focus on slide suppose with this space from last 20 years i was producing a and b product now how magically i can produce how i can produce product c and d because my space is limited i cannot increase the size of my company so here role of robotics and automations comes into picture if we go for automation tools if we go with robotics tools then flexibility in production can be achieved and for achieving good flexibility we need good numbers of robot on soft load so uh, this is just uh, one example i have taken from automotive company like if you take example of maruti so with uh, they introduced maruti 800 in 1984 after like here if you roughly see 10 years gap is there roughly here again 10 years gap 10 years or 8 years gap so after 10 years they are thinking about next product so this was approach that maruti had earlier but now what happened to same company same maruti udyog they are producing new variants new car models or totally modified models from older name in in 3 months time in two months time what happened why they have changed their policy why they have gone for high mix because of you and me because of customer demand and for handling such kind of situation only and only this automation and robotics will help you out so you have to trigger from you have to trigger on uh, from 1 to 2 2 to 3 4 to 5 like all whatever industrial revolution is uh, having demand you have to switch on that particular revolution then only you can do so uh, um if you see this statics fourth ev- uh, revolution we are trying to follow in india and here one statics says that i have taken from world economic forum it says by 2022 that just gone half of the all worker in india will require reskilling to meet talent demand of the future so here also all report says you have to reskill suppose you are already involved in some technology try to reskill try to learn try to re- rerun so that you can you can like support current industry demand so is our workforce is ready with right skill set if answer of this questions comes yes then you no uh, no need to worry about your industry but if answer of this questions comes no my workforce is not having right skill set then it's the right time to work upon these kind of things because as i said we as a customer are very demanding if as a customer you are not ready to compromise with your product what's wrong with any industry mind it what's wrong with any industry if they are not going to compromise with their engineers if you are having very expertise in x technology but industry need y technology expert why they are going to hire you 
So if you are not compromising with your product, then how industry is going to compromise with engineers? So they always need right people, right at right place, at right time. And this is most important thing with right skill set. So try to understand pain of industry. If you are if you are in uh, this side, means suppose you are looking for job, everything looks nice, very nice. But if you go to that side where you have to compete with other like uh, competitors, then uh, you require very smart persons equipped with good technology, good uh, skill set, right skill set. Then only they can compete. So this is the pain of any industry. If you are having right skill set, then only they can offer you good package, good positions. And suppose you have made your mind, you have to learn certain technology, then what's your plan? You have to execute these things with some plan. How can you uh, like plan your success for life? For that, I'm just giving you few things. You can easily uh, plan beautiful life, beautiful future, future, by just making yourself ready for future world and how you can be fit with this by scaling or up scaling. So best way to learn, I'm coming to my original topic that I have assigned by Rajiv sir on robotics, but I'm just setting the contest because if this why is not clear, why I have to learn robotics, why I have to learn IoT embedded uh, like uh, uh, any any technology, any updated technology, then you are not going to grasp many things. For grasping any uh, like uh, any technology, why should be clear? See, I'm just wearing this uh, sweater here. If you can see my picture, why I'm wearing this sweater? Because I'm feeling cold. If this why is not clear, I become ill. So I have to avoid this cold. So that's why I have to wear this sweater. So if this why is not clear, then you are not going to learn or earn anything. So why should be clear in every phase of our life, then you can do best, best justice with your life. So what is the best way to learn? Just understand by experiential learning. This is, this is a buzzword that is going on everywhere. Experiential learning. What is experiential learning? That is nothing but learning by doing. If you have to learn how to like ride this, uh, how to like operate this bicycle, you cannot learn it through theoretical book. You have to face this bicycle morning to evening, four or five days continuously. Then only you can learn how to ride, how to like uh, operate this bicycle. So learning by doing is the best option if you want to learn anything. If you think I can also suggest based on my experience, if you are passionate about anything, if you're passionate about robotics, if you're passionate about like embedded, if you're passionate about big data, if you're passionate about augmented reality, then you are the like, uh, you have solved your half of the problem. Means at least you have some interest in, in any vertical. So next thing, what you have to do, you have to update yourself because only updated version of yours can remove all the bugs, all the problems of life. And further things that I can suggest how you can achieve this by doing hard work. That is very, very old thing and very powerful thing. This is very, very powerful word, hard work. You have to do hard work, but it should have right direction. Right direction means you can say if you are upgrading yourself at right skill set, then only we can say, yes, you are doing hard work with right skill set. So hard work is very, very important and there is no substitute. And after learning, after learning whatever technology, whatever skill set you want from yourself, you have to go with many, many projects, various mini projects, mini projects one, mini projects two, three, four, means how your learning can be implemented into some project, project or product. So you have to do some minor projects, mini projects, whatever technology you are trying to learn, try to involve yourself with projects, then do major projects, good projects in that whatever learning you have done in your last years, few months, you have to implement those things.
because again i want your attention on this slide because if any problems comes you and you are working somewhere so you cannot save yourself by saying no no sir this problem belongs to computer science no sir i think this belongs to electronics because nowadays what industry is expecting if any problems comes that can be solved at your end so earlier if i say i am having one uh, one car and it is having some problem where should i go you straight away say i think you should go with mechanical engineer but now i cannot say this thing because now car is become electric car so role of mechanical computer electronics electrical like equally i can say there so if you are having multidisciplinary knowledge means at least you can tackle basics of uh, like you can be expertise in robotics but some basic knowledge of plc mechatronics hydraulics pneumatic if you are having then you will become a good resource for any industry and you will very you will be very high in demand also so matching the pace with changing nature of demand of industry as we discussed high makes low volume if you are if you are okay with this means you have made you have made your mindset yes i have to update myself i am ready to learn then how you can uh, be a part of this uh, revolution just <clears throat> try to just try to opt any one technology opt means you have to update yourself with any one suppose today we are discussing about robotics so these are the skill set that already defined for industrial revolution 4 additive manufacturing big data cyber security simulation robotics all such thing suppose i have made my mind like i am very passionate about robotics now next thing is you have to fine tune fine tune means you have to go up to that level where you can handle not only simple projects you can handle complex projects in that particular domain so fine tuning means how fine tuning works comes i already discussed you have to start with mini projects major projects then some small easy consultancy work then again you can involve yourself for complex project so this is the way how you can be a part of this revolution so try to opt any one technology and today we are here to discuss robotics so let's take robotics little forward today but uh, my problem is that whenever robotics comes it always comes with these two names automation and robotics so from audience i am just trying to ask very simple question and very basic question what is your opinion like uh, you have option a b c here i am trying to ask automation is a big umbrella under that this robotics is going to work or robotics is a very big thing or big domain under that this automation is going to work or you find no connection between automation and robotics both are totally separate domain so if you have to choose any one option like uh, i am again repeating automation is a very big domain under that this robotics work or robotics is a big domain under that automation work or you find no connection so right answer is those who are saying option a so automation is a very very big thing under that various verticals are working so if i have to name them like in automation we have to learn plc we have to learn sensor we have to learn hmi we have to learn scada we have to learn robotics like different different things n numbers of things can be covered under automation so this is the right answer so automation and robotics like going to solve your problem Uh, that is high in demand with this high mix and low volume but you have to understand it properly now if automation is a big domain <clears throat> let's understand what is the basic elements of automation so here i find suppose i have to do simple automation or world's biggest or complex automation i have to do but one thing is common in both problem either it's simple or complex automation have only these three components if i am good in these three components i can easily solve any problem like automation having input technology then how we are going to process or control this is second element and how we are going to get output or actuation so this is third component so 
automation may be simple may be complex but if you are expertise any of these element like maybe you are expertise in sensors maybe you are expertise in plc or other controllers maybe you are expertise in hydraulics pneumatics and electrical actuators so you have very good a job opportunity but my question here is just before this slide i said robotics is a part of automation so where i can fit robot robot can be fit at the sensor part my question is this can robot i fit at control part or this uh, processing part or robot can be fit at this actuation part because if robot is a part of automation somewhere we have to fit this fit this hardware either at input end or processing or controlling end or at actuation end output end so right answer for this is if i'm talking about only robot not only robot this robotic arm i can say if i am talking about this robotic arm so that can be fit at output part but my answer will change to d last one if i am saying i am having one i am having one robotic system because system always having some different different components how robot arm can be fit at output parts because if you see suppose this is robotic arm so this is mechanical structure so this is link this is joint this is link this is joint this is link this is joint so how this joints we are going to like handle how we are going to rotate for this rotation i have to use this electrical actuator different different kind of motors so in this way i can certainly say yes because with my mechanical structure with my mechanical robotic arm i am using this electrical things so it's a part of like uh, output technology so it can be considered as output but when we say where we can fit robotic system so answer must come with this like robotic system can be fit all together because if you observe important component of any robotic system so it is start with this input technology so this is our input technology where teach pendant is going to play a role then controller this is second element where we are going to process our command then manipulator so here if you see these joints having some motors here again some motors so here this manipulator is nothing but a robot in standard language we say is a manipulator now if this manipulator if i am have to doing this so this is output technology this is input technology controller is our like uh, processing thing now at the end of this robot one more important thing required that is our tool like which application in which application i am going to utilize my this robotic arm so these four components make one simple robotic system one to four suppose i have to i have to develop any simple application with this robot without these four components i cannot develop so system is like that if i remove any one component from this robotic system the application or the purpose is not going to fulfill so try to understand robotic system if you are purchasing any robotic system means you are handling automation as a whole all components are by default readily available there now little bit more we are going to talk about robot so if you go and check the robot density what is robot density is first try to understand if any industry having 10000 workers on their shop floor so how many robots are there in this ratio so if you see i have projected various countries here finland france spain important is china germany japan korea if you see there are different different robot density just put triple zero in front of all these so these are the robot density these are the robot density that we have but here can you identify india india i cannot see india anywhere and if you take the global average it is 141 at least 
141 robots on an average each and every country having but india is nowhere because robot density in india is now somewhere around 70s so we are having very very low uh, density means robots are not there see one question rises if robots are not then why we should upgrade our skill set in this domain just stop your thought at this instant and see this slide we are not rich in robot nowadays but if you consider our future many many robots we are going to purchase in upcoming years so this is the statics that i have taken from international federation of robotics that is very authenticated resource for industrial robots here you can see blue color long long towers are there so this is the main driving force for indian or asian countries growth because we are not going to purchase very high numbers of robots in upcoming year so if suddenly we are going to increase from 70 suppose 70 to suppose 200 so who all are going to handle this robot so for that we are preparing ourselves now if you see this is a statics very old statics 2021 here it is 2022 why this tower red and other color towers are low these are those countries that already purchase good numbers of robot in the beginning now if you have robot you can change the tool and switch to different different applications that's why other countries not focusing on the purchasing of robot they are only focusing on how we can change different different applications with uh, by changing different different tools but our in india our main focus is how we can bring more and more numbers of robot on our soft floor so that high mix and low volume phenomena can be achieved so you are at very right edge if you are going to uh, like upgrade your skill set in robotics domain good numbers of robot good numbers of opportunities waiting for you in many branded industries and if you check if you go by industry wise electrical electronics automotive chemical metal food almost each and every industry is using these industrial robots in very high numbers so you have to prepare yourself for future ready uh, workforce then only you can survive so if uh, now i'm just going to cover uh, very basic things what is robot like in day to day life we have seen so many robots but what exactly robot whenever uh, you say i'm working on robot or i'm going to attend webinar on robot what people what people thinks just read this slide when it comes to robot people always assume you are going to learn some humanoid kind of things but that is not true if you see the like generation like progress of this robot in 60s somewhere in 60s worldwide research started with this non servo controlled robot first generation in 80s we have servo controlled robot in 90s worldwide we have started like working on servo controlled plus ai robot somewhere 2000 this fourth generation humanoid robots came into picture so we directly jump to this fourth generation but my dear friends please mind it most of the industry 80 90 percent industry working with this first second and third generation robots for fulfilling their dreams for fulfilling their productivity for fulfilling their customer demand this is <coughs> not much use for industry maybe in service domain you can use and now if you see worldwide one more generation came into existence that is biological robots where robots can generate their own miniatures means robots are producing another robots like uh, in human being uh, we are uh, like uh, uh, giving birth to new life so here robots are going to create new miniatures same thing uh, reflected into one Indian movie, uh, Rajnikan movie in Chitti. If you recall last scene, in that big Rajnikan as a robot converted himself into mini, in, in, in many miniatures. So that is a kind of concept that is taken from this biological robots. So 
why we always always mistake to like compare this human as a robot because each and every important part of human body we have replaced with some some thing here bone may, bone basically provides mechanical structure to body same we are here providing with some uh, some uh, like mechanical arrangement muscles in human beings giving some motions so for that we have pneumatic hydraulics and electrical kind of actuators senses can be replaced with sensors respiration can be replaced by ac dc power in robot our brain can be replaced with controller and last thing that is most important the knowledge of human being can be can be replaced with some good programs so almost all substitute we have find that is essential in very very essential in human so for robot we have find some solution <clears throat> and if i have to categorize so robot can be stationary can be wheeled can be legged so n numbers of ways we can define robot but simplest definition of robot says robot is a machine designed to execute one or more task automatically with speed and precision that is most important so here we are trying to complete one or more task automatically with speed and precision but this is definition of robot now if you classify this robot if you see here one category can be industrial robot and one category can be service robot so today we are going to focus upon this industrial robot okay so industrial robot is where we are going to this robotics arm where we are going to implement this arm in industry but if we see this service robotics domain here indoor robotics and field robotics so there are different different ways in that you can classify this robot but we are today we are going to more focus upon this industrial one so some some uh, people like define based on application this classification like one those robots used in industry can be classified as industrial where human and robots working together one domain can be classified as a robotics one where automation where autonomous robots mobile robots are doing some task can be considered as a mobile robot so basic definition of industrial Sir, robot one small question has come in between by one participant yes yes question from vedant vedant uh, mr vedant purohit yes sir uh, he is asking that uh, are we going towards cloud based working industries with rpa yes yes sir robot process automation is going to come in very 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 big existence i'm going to touch upon that during my latest trends sir and he Just is asking one minutes. more question yes uh, how robots can be designed that industries work in hybrid way what are the security concerns in rpa okay okay that i'll definitely touch upon sir i'll okay. come to that particular slide i'll keep this question in my mind yeah so industrial robots are very popular because it can be having like it can going to offer you good repeatability adaptability accuracy flexibility this looks like normal terms but if you are going to install any robot at any particular application definitely it will do work repeatedly like whatever 24 by 7 hours you want so these are the some best quality and out of this normally industrial robots we are going to implement where we have to deal with more repetitive task if from morning to evening i have to perform same task i can easily switch to industrial robot because by default it is going to offer precision speed accuracy and all such uh, qualities but uh, with same precision i cannot do like morning to evening human being cannot do any work so repeatability is the best characteristics i can say here with that i can uh, replace uh, any application manual application with this robot and based on geometry if you see robots uh, industrial robots having cartesian jointed arm cylindrical spherical scara and why they are having different different name because if you see cylindrical robots so here it is basically moving a cylindrical robot tool is moving in cylindrical area 
if you say spherical robot here is sphere kind of work volume is created so our robot can work in this volume if we saying cartesian cartesian we know x y z direction so here our robots in working in rectangular format so gantry robots can be considered one is kara robot is there where very unique kind of shape it is creating as a, their work envelope and at last most famous one this is articulated robots normally it comes with the six axis it is creating very huge work envelope area that's why it is very very much popular in industry in industry so you can see working of this cartesian robot in first video this is a scara robot where here revolute revolute and linear motion we are getting then a spherical robot if you see the most popular one so that is the articulated one you can visualize this here then this is cylindrical robot it is going to create cylindrical kind of work envelope so there are so many robots but these are the popular series that industry having and out of these as i said if you have to select top 3 so overall worldwide 60% robots belongs to articulated then 20% from cartesian then few from scara so these are the most popular robots that industry having and uh, based on control also you can select your robot whether you want some feedback kind of mechanism or in open loop so you can go with this control system also and the best part of this robotic system is here and defector so with same robot you can you can move to n numbers of application see here by just changing tool by just changing their end effector i can switch from welding to painting painting to gluing gluing to assembly assembly to pick and place like that only something we have to take care that is their power source how this tool can be actuated if that actuation i am going to control i can use same robot for different different application this is the beauty of industrial robot that's why those countries having high robot density are not going to buy more robots because only application is going to change why they should change this robotic arm the life of this uh, robotic arm is very very high more than 20 25 years you can use if you are using this robot in properly technically condition whatever technical condition is defined if you are using robot under that technical condition more than 20 30 years you don't have to think about this industrial robot and this is uh, of your interest if you want to make your career in this domain you can choose uh, like uh, these three things means either you can join robotic uh, robot manufacturers or you can go with this research and development or you can be a part of robot integrators most popular things in india is the third one robot integrators because manufacturing is very very limited here if you see worldwide player in this industrial robots abb yashikawa kuka fano most of them are germany from germany japan and uh, usa so but if you want to be part of robot integrators you can join so many big names that in india that is working like uh, wipro ida cosma magma rhythms of delta robotics motec so many good names are there so what basically uh, in in india industry people are doing in indian industry they are purchasing suppose 100 units 200 units 1000 units robots but ultimately these robots has to be like um, integrated with the existing system suppose i'm having some some peripheral objects some in, some some predefined hardware in my industry now i'm trying to fit my robot with some application then what i have to do i have to integrate my robot with my existing hardware for that this integration things required and uh, out of these three out of these three like i can straight away say india having 80% scope or job opportunity in this robot integrators in in, in this domain uh, then uh, you can some of you can join this uh, research and r&d department where you can contribute in the development and other things very few manufacturers are india in india like one is tata automation limited tal where you can join as a like robot manufacturer you can search something but uh, if you want to operate this robot <laughs> <it> <laughs>
hello if you want to like operate this robot you should be through with this you have to understand robot safety how robot can yeah, be job yeah. how robot can be master how tool and base can be calibrated so these are the few operation that you must remember before like operating any robot and as i said you can program your robot also by two ways either by using teach pendant means online you required robot in front of you then only you can utilize these two languages these two like fundamentals by teaching or by playback but this is again a very powerful tool where you can use simulation tools for programming your robots and later on same program can be uh, like implemented on uh, hardware so if you see the latest trends nowadays uh, robots and human beings are uh, closely working smart gripper as i said tool is very very uh, important domain for any robot if you are producing smart tools then easily i can switch one application to another application so here a gripper or tool design industry doing very good role now integration earlier was very very difficult but now uh, they are providing very in very easy way you just uh, integrate your robot with your cnc machine or other machines by by just connecting few wires and programming and other things also goes uh, very easy nowadays uh, cloud computing concept came into picture where robot can automatically download programs from cloud and uh, it is going to self optimize i will show you one more slide in that it will be clear so self optimization techniques robot having they can optimize their path and uh, here if you have uh, if you have to work with uh, these three choices you can choose whether you want pure manual operation where you want pure robotic operation or you want high flexibility and high productivity so here you have to mix human being with this robot so advanced robotics domain work here where human and our robot system are working together so here if you see the journey normally robots started with this industrial automation robots used for automation kind of things then nowadays people more are talking about this collaborative robot where robot and human beings are working together now in upcoming future this mobile robotics service robotics will play a very important role then this prospective intelligence robotics where they can take some decisions also so these are the like uh, upcoming trends where we can fit our things if you have to understand this collaborative robot things in deep you can see here it's a journey where earlier we are working like robot is doing their own operation and we as a human being is standing outside from the cell but now suppose i have to increase productivity robot is doing their work here in some envelope work envelope and human beings are doing their individual task in some other area now here we have made some common area where robot and human being are going to work but not in real time means here first collaborative robot is started with some sequential collaboration means if robot are in action human have to is, uh, be there but not in action so here at last stage if you say responsive collaboration means robot and human beings are working together in real time and if we are going to push my robot or pull my robot it is going to react on that because a uh, high level of sensors force and torque sensors are equipped in this robotic arm so this is very very good way of uh, like working and here you can uh, put your uh, any robot in physical uh, system cyber physical system where through some networking you can uh, download your program so each and every smartness you can provide your robot by just putting smart sensors on their robotic arm and somebody ask uh, like uh, how robots can be communicated through cloud so here if you see connected and collaborative robots enable smart manufacturing for both smes and global enterprise suppose you have one company in india suppose this is one plant in india that i want to replicate somewhere in suppose usa 
so same plant suppose i want to replicate in other location in uh, world map it can be easily done because whatever thing i have to develop whatever important thing i have developed here layout programs and other things that can be put on cloud and that can be easily called there so robot can automatically download what they need to get started from cloud library and then start to optimize through self learning so here some machine learning concept came into picture that we have to implement so that our robot smartly can download only you have to teach so many times so that uh, they should be having good uh, learning ability how they can like replicate or duplicate same thing and in latest trend because of uh, space problem people are now switching to a small size of robot if you are going to uh, like implement a small size miniature kind of robot in your industry then this is space problem can get solved just see this one beautiful video in that one robot can be fitted into 600 by 600 by 600 mm work volume and just a minute i have to play so uh, if you talk about uh, applications of robots so it can be in various domain industrial robot is one domain other than that domestic security space professional there are so many domains where robot can be used but if you have to focus upon only industrial robots so it can be used for many applications like welding surface coating machining palletizing assembly handling and if you talk about industry wide every industry is using this robots like wood industry building materials metal industry foundry plastic food printing pharmaceuticals automotive medical research machine tools there is uh, like uh, there is a very huge scope you can implement robot as per your requirement anywhere so there is no limit for implementing this robot now it is medical industry also using very high numbers of robot by just uh, you just see this statistics by 2018 500 units were sold for uh, medical field but if you compare with this 2022 around 20000 units we have sold in this uh, for medical field industrial robot so uh, these robots are used for surgery for scanning and for different different as a helping hand you can utilize this robot and in hollywood bollywood movies also they are creating some scenes some good uh, pictures with the help of this robot so these are the few movies in that uh, few industrial robots are used and if you talk about job opportunity so uh, you have uh, i can start with this third one suppose anybody interested in uh, higher education they can easily opt mtech in uh, masters in automation robotics or robotics engineering 
and also if you talk about job role they become a scientist they become a robotic engineer technician specialist designer operator programmer system engineer or robotics tester so like there are so many like things you can do with this domain so good career opportunity waiting for you uh, only you have to upgrade yourself update yourself i have started my presentation with this slide i think if anybody having doubt whether robot is still a choice or need i think that is clear with this one and if i have to conclude my presentation indian industry need to become world class automation and robotics technology will play a key role in that we all need to gear up gear up means we have to upgrade ourselves we have to like upgrade or reskill so that we can contribute in this domain so with this uh, i can stop here uh, and uh, thank you for listening me uh, i have uh, designed one course that is having 90 days duration and it is totally in online mode so 12 week uh, if you see all details are here 2 hours per day you have to devote in 5 uh, days in a week like monday to friday per day 2 hours if you are going to devote for 12 weeks so it completes uh, course it will be complete in 90 days so uh, this is uh, uh, for your suppose you have triggered your uh, suppose uh, i have justified my role maybe some interest i have triggered under you to build your career in this robotics if you are okay with this then you can start building learning your things in this vertical in this domain by joining uh, any training programs i'm not saying just go with this only as i said there are three things one is mindset one is a skill set one is platform or environment if you find yourself busy very much busy in your day to day life you can have only one options you can opt only online uh, like way of learning so in that way it may be offer good learning for you so rest uh, i'm uh, overing to rajiv sir uh, we can take few questions and uh, whatever uh, think audience can uh, are are having in their minds can ask me i'm open to questions rajiv sir over to you um thank you um, mr vikas see <laughs> there is a question which has come uh, here yes sir from mr tawsif ahmed okay so he asks sir could you please elaborate all those three work like what is it that we would be doing exactly mr tawsif uh, like, uh, in manufacturing industry see robot manufacturing industry you can appoint as a, like uh, like uh, you have to design new system you have to define your like manufacturing process there i have seen uh, at least uh, i can see uh, i can say uh, during my one of the training programs in germany i have witnessed how kuka robots are manufactured so there are there are huge manpower that involved in that particular uh, field where every person have to play a very very different role means where machine is going to create machine there they are taking help of robots also for doing certain task repetitive task but yes uh, designing of robots then uh, how you can design different different payload with compact model so they are mainly focusing upon production like any product if you say suppose i am i am trying to fit myself in automotive industry so what kind of skill set i required I, either i can join as a design engineer or production engineer or quality engineer so like this kind of roles available with any production industry so in totality if you are not good in robot design at least you can contribute at production part quality control part or or any like um, like uh, maybe inventory control industrial lot of industrial tools are there that you can handle there but when we talk about designing part that is very very critical because you cannot you cannot fit uh, theoretical things if you having little bit knowledge about kinematics so robot 
is working upon forward and inverse kinematics both okay so that can not be easily implemented in hardware in that case you require some good uh, range of people uh, r and d researchers that can that can do this task uh, in a very easy way so r and d job scope nowadays india having very less because not much companies are producing robot in india uh, if you talk about industrial robot so most of the robots are imported from germany or japan so this uh, top two job opportunities are very less in in the beginning of my presentation i said like out of these three our role our major role is as a system integrator so you become you have you have to acquire knowledge about robotics you have to acquire knowledge about sensors then plc so that you can easily integrate any hardware with this robotic arm so that they can work in synchronization synchronized manner so try to uh, in initial day like suppose uh, you are in final year or you are planning your switch from any industry to this robotic industry so good job opportunities are available in this system integration field so try to focus so, there more uh, one more important question has come yes sir it says that uh, right it says that by mr rajesh rajamani okay asking recently we are hearing about accidents happening due to robots like during manufacturing robots misunderstood man as a shipping item what solution yes. can you provide for that sir for uh, any accident uh, there is no book available suppose uh, i am running my industry in last 10 years suppose 50 accident or 50 things happened if i documented all these 50 things it is not going to give me a like 100% surety if i am going to follow this 50 can be avoided yes this 50 can be avoided but any time 51 can be introduced 52 can be introduced most of them what case you are discussing that is related to sensor normally uh, i also came across such cases because if uh, i am going to put my robot in totally autonomous or automatic mode suppose i am putting one metal sensor on my robot tool suppose one bin is there in that plastic and metal parts are there and my programming my logic is that i have to segregate metal parts from that particular my, um, uh, bin so i have put in my metal sensor there so wherever robot is going to detect metal it is going there and picking that particular material or metal part suppose during that uh, during that operation i am going near to my robot and i have weird suppose this uh, iron ring because i am wrongly went there because uh, it is said if robot is in action nobody can enter in there work envelope because that is most dangerous zone Be if i am crossing that limit means my my finger rings can be detected also there and that path is automatically planned because we have given right to robot you can just detect metal wherever you find metal you can directly go there and pick and put it at this bin so one path one robot programming fundamental is you are planning path where no sensor required one is automatic that is sensor based where you have no control only control is that you don't have to enter in danger zone where robot is working so try to avoid this danger zone or work envelope of the robot then only we can avoid such accidents only suggestion is that and uh, robotic industries are very strict about this uh, accident and uh, uh, there is one rule every 6 months they are orally like conducting uh, seminar on robot safety and other safety and every 2 years they are taking written test with uh, for their operators engineer whether they have full knowledge of the safety rules and not so these are the few things that we can implement Uh, one more, uh, uh, two more questions. Uh, one, Mr. Sheshank uh, has been asking, uh, why are robot manufacturing? Why are not robot manufacturing companies in India? Sir, that answer I am also finding. But the most critical thing that I find, see. if you go with any robotic arm river if you do any robot reverse engineering you will find only 
two three components are important one is our actuator suppose i am putting servo at joint how this servo is going to react while i am like uh, uh, giving command through my t pendant plus 180 degree minus 180 degree if this precision is not so like uh, precise then uh, any robot can be developed but if you want good repeatability with high accuracy and precision then you have to follow all this mathematical modeling thing uh, just i am taking one name that is dh parameters one fundamental things while you are developing any robot is dh parameters where how our axis control x y z can be implemented into each and every axis so that is there and this this theoretical concept if you are able to like implement into physical entity then only robot can be developed and recently tal tata automation limited had introduced robots but they are bulky in size see i am producing one product and my competitor competitor is also producing one product difference is all things are same accuracy other things if it match everything is same but problem is that that is more bulky in size and the robot i am purchasing from germany or japan is more light in weight with same load uh, payload capacity means robot can handle same load uh, in one line i can only answer for this question the kinematics and dh parameters part we are not able to exactly implement on the hardware part if we can do that easily we can also produce this robot there is nothing uh, other things uh, stopping us so there is yes. another question is that what are the skills we need to learn uh, while joining an industry robot industry uh before ro before joining robot industry just uh, i have already declared oh, no, okay. what are the skills what yes what i'm coming are to required that. to get in robotic industry to get a yes, job yes. in robotic industry okay okay so uh, see uh, mainly robots uh, skill uh, for become a robot engineer or any uh, position you want to achieve you have to be uh, good in programming part programming part means robot programming having equal job opportunity in online versus offline means if you are good in simulation good good job opportunities if you are uh, having like online hands on practice you have then good hands on practice for programming then again good job opportunities but apart from this programming skill you should be good in sensors you should be good in plc these two skill sets suppose you are having you can have very bright future so how to integrate any robot with any x machine and how to get signal from any x machine to robot for that sensor knowledge and plc knowledge is very very essential then only you can be achieve, you are going to achieve good success in this so parallelly try to run robotics sensors and plc these three components are good enough okay another question is how hybrid technology can be developed in rpa with optimized programming <coughs> vedant purohit okay sir this rpa uh, basically uh, we are talking about uh, this uh, industrial robotics things that is totally hardware based if you talk about rpa that is nothing but robot process automation so here we are trying to develop some software robots means here we are trying to develop some uh, like um, code in that my robot i have to do i have to teach my robot or my software or my code like every time suppose one excel sheet is there one excel sheet is there in that four column is there so from four column always my code my robot soft robot will go and pick data from that particular column or that particular row and place it in somewhere else so in this way i can teach my robot so it's a totally different field like rpa cannot be compared with this industrial robotics there you have to totally handle the software things more coding things required some rpa tools are there if you are learning or taking training on that you can easily do that but for hybrid part i have i am not much clear because that is not my area 
so sorry for this uh, but rpa is uh, is dem- is in demand but there we are developing soft robot not we are going to handle this uh, hardcore robots question from mr shakti some of us are fourth year robotics students can mm-hmm. you please suggest software and source which will help kinematic and inverse kinematic yes yes uh, you just google it uh robo analyzer robo analyzer r o b o a n a l y s e r robo analyzer is a very very good software where you can easily visualize how kinematics principles are working it is developed by iit delhi professor sk saha uh, during my mtech he also taught me so they developed very good software for learning this kinematics principle so robo analyzer is good software and for learning uh, robot simulation part you can go with this robo guide robo guide or robo dk i i suggest robo dk is a good and open source r o b o dk d for delhi k for kolkata robo dk is good if you are learning simulation or offline programming so practice more on robo dk the, uh, in robo dk software all make software like all make uh, robots like kuka fanu kbb yashikawa every make robot you will find there you can create your own cell your own application so try to practice with this robo dk and if you are looking for kinematics understanding so you can go with this robo analyzer so another uh, question comes is that can you one minute what is this I'm just getting the question yes uh, it says of uh, can you give an explanation about the maintenance cost and expenses of working robo here uh, just i can say uh, if we purchase any one robot new robot and if we are using that particular robot in their uh, all standard condition then the first service first maintenance will comes after 20000 hours this is normally robotic companies are giving like suppose i am going to purchase one car so after 5000 km or one or five months three months i have to go for service or maintenance similarly if we are buying one robot so after 20000 working hours suppose i am having one robot but that is not in running condition only 5 hours per day i am running that particular robot so i have to there is one clock in that uh, you can easily see whether 20000 hours completed or not if it is completed if you convert this 20000 hours into years it will come near around 2.25 almost 2 and a half year so if you are using your robot in proper condition so after 2 and 2 and a half years you have to go for regular maintenance in that some belts are there the tension of that belt may get affected we have to take care of that belt uh, tension oil ingressing very normal checkup so we don't have to invest much in uh, uh, invest uh, this maintenance part only we have to take care about this accident if some accident happen then some motor get damaged like six axis robots are there so six motor servo motors are there so if you are saving accident means you are saving your cost saving your robot maintenance cost is very very low and uh, two years three years after that only you have to maintain yes sir so i hope that uh, we are um, answering most of the questions and i hope that you are uh, we are you are satisfied with i am very sure that most of you are satisfied with the questions um, there's one sindhu madam uh, is asking uh, they having a robotics club and what type of workshops can we keep on robotics oh, ma'am uh, i so madam, uh, we are just uh, in my in the chat box i've just left my number there my humble request is that you know if you are in touch with us we can answer that question personally to you not a not a problem because this needs a little time to uh, think so my humble request is that you know that's my whatsapp number if you can just send us a number we can immediately 
answer that yes some offline questions are we can take like uh, they can yeah. just write their queries we will uh, answer them surely yeah so even less uh, mr mahesh kamble is asking so can you explain last stage in human robot interaction and again mr venkate vishwa vishwate jagta after completing my degree final year of degree which robotics course can i choose sir can you just uh, you know again as i said my whatsapp number uh, you know through which which you have joined if you just leave your uh, na name which my number is you know as i left in this group 721 7813975 we will answer this to you um offline um friends uh, my humble request to you is that um, um you know <clears throat> please be in touch with us please stay tuned with us even after the webinar also uh, we will be conducting lot of uh, lot of such uh, useful webinars we will also be conducting such useful webinars in time to come and uh, we will also be having lot of we also request people like you who have topics and who want to conduct webinars through us you can also conduct webinars through us and uh, you know also you can also please share that uh, if you have any job opportunities and all that you can share in this group so let us keep this uh, whatsapp group alive please don't quit and uh, we can have lot of uh, uh, interactions Uh, as we go uh, you know a lot of interactions and lot of uh, this one you know lot of uh, new offerings what the uh, robot industry can give and we can also be in constant people can share their problem technical problems here and we can and some people can suggest some solutions like that we let us have a very good robotic interaction that's why we have named this group also trends in of robotics in 2024 world skill competition so many things keep happening and we can always have a uh, continuous this one i uh, really thank you very much for this valuable time which all of you have shared almost 1 hour 1 and 1/2 hours of uh, your time 7:15 we started and it is 8:45 now so i thank you very much for all your time uh, mr uh, mr vikash uh, thank you very much for your time too welcome welcome sir uh, you know um, <clears throat> and thank you very much for your time and we look forward uh, you know it was a uh, lot of people are appreciating your presentation and the uh, the way you have presented the slides and the content and all that lot of people are saying that you have um, you know answered very well and things like that uh, so you know we look forward uh, mr sanjay kurkute is a good friend of mine from loni he is also saying that they have got an automation and robotics branch uh, okay. and they are they are pravara college of engineering they are a 100 year old uh, institution and they have got some 103 uh, education institutions in their own loni so okay. they are also appreciating you very much um, so thank you very much and thank you all please don't quit the group please be in touch with us and uh, you know thanks all the international audience from dubai oman uk and india thank you everyone for really attending us now once again my name is tk rajiv director of this company suprajit technical and management studies opc private limited uh, so let us be in touch thank you very much good night and stay in tune thank, thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you so much thank you